Hello everyone, and here we are with a new video today. I decided to do something a little fun, and we are going to rank the gods of Galorian. Um, Galorian, sorry, Galorian. Um, <laughs> we're going to be ranking these gods. Um, I kind of mixed up the, uh, how the rankings go with the, uh, the best being praise be unto them. Um, then we have culturally observing. Uh, then we have, you know, philosophical debate, as in you'd be willing to debate their philosophies, but you don't really care either way. We have a, do you want to hear about our Lord and Savior, as in, you know, this God is as annoying as those kinds of people um, that just like, you know, go to your house, go house to house, and are like, do you want to hear about our Lord and Savior? No, we don't. Um, and then we have burn the heretics, because that's always fun. So we're going to go down through these gods, um, and then I have a couple of other ones that I don't have the symbols for, but I, that are honorary on this list uh, that we're going to go over too. But this is, you know, this is my tears personally, right? It's all, it's all an opinion, so you can disagree all you want, but here we go. Um, the first one is Avatar. okay? Avatar is like the god of law and civilization and mercantilism. And he, you know, his goal is to bring civilization to the wilds, to the wilderness, um, and keep spreading that civilization. And, you know, strategy-wise, he's a very cautious, you know, he likes to think things through. He doesn't like to, you know, just jump in impulsively or anything like that. Um, and he's also, um, also the holder of a lot of the vaults that the gods have. Um, which is really, really cool. So, Abadar for me is a praise be unto them level god. I think that Abadar is really, really cool. He's one of my favorite deities. I love his uh, deity weapon, the light crossbow a lot. Um, I just, I vibe with the whole, you know, civilization and trade thing. And the, and the way he handles it isn't this, like, kind of expansive conquering type of mentality. It's just very, like, methodical, cautious kind of mentality, which I totally vibe with. So for me, Abadar is top tier god. Um, next we have Gyrona. Gyrona, Gyrana, Gyrona. <laughs> um, she is the hag goddess, okay? The witch goddess, basically. Um, she doesn't have like official priestesses or temples or anything. You can find piles of stones that are dedicated to her as like little ritual sites. And um, she's basically the goddess of like hatred and spite. And most of the people that follow her are women that have been um, abused, beaten, um, have had something terrible happen to them and therefore seek her patronage so that they can get back at whoever did the thing to them. Um, so she's, she's, it's mostly, mostly female followers, mostly women followers, which is really, really cool. Um, and just like, even though she's evil and the way that her people go about things is, is evil and full of hate and just very, you know, murderous and just not okay. She's chaotic evil. She's chaotic evil deity, right? So that part's rough, but for me, I still think she's pretty cool. I think she's cool because there isn't another goddess like her. There's not another goddess who's doing all of this for the, the women that are, you know, having things happen to them in society in this way. And, you know, having a deity that sticks up for those for those women is, is very awesome and empowering. And it gives them hope and a purpose and a way to, you know, get back at the at the oppressors, which I'm all for. So I'm going to give Gyrona philosophical debate, you know, a solid in between because I would love I love to talk theory about her and I like what she does. But I do think that her followers kind of go a little batshit crazy sometimes. Um, as you do when, you know, the men are doing such horrible, oppressive things to you throughout your entire livelihood, right? So it's it's warranted. It's warranted sometimes, but it's also just, you know, it, the violence is not my favorite thing, so I will put it on philosophical debate. 
Um, next is Asmodeus. Praise be unto our Lord and Savior, Asmodeus. We love him to death. Definitely top tier God um, above Avatar for sure. Lawful evil deity, um, you know, ruler of the nine hells. Uh, he is the king devil. He's awesome. He's awesome. He's, you know, all about contracts and exploiting those contracts to get what he wants, um, which is really, really interesting, I think, in a deity. Um, and one of the things that I really like about him is that he maintains a pretty solid relationship with a lot of, like, the good deities. Um, you know, having worked with Iomade, Saren Ray, um, and all these different deities, he, you know, he's worked with them. He even helped them fight against Rovagug when they were, um, during the age of creation, when they were putting a Rovagug away. Like, he was the one who put the key in and was like, all right, Rovagug's locked away. Like, he helped fight that, which is just freaking cool. Like, he's an evil deity who is like, you know what, I'm gonna help them fight the, like, most evil deity and whatever. So Lawful Evil, I think, is an interesting alignment because of that. And I also think that Asmodeus is an interesting god because of that. And um, he's probably by far my favorite deity. I think, like, I I like the Lawful Gods a lot most of the time. And he's Lawful Evil, but really he's just kind of Lawful look out for himself, which I think is an interesting spin on it because he's not, like, truly, truly evil. You know, he's not like the kind of evil that you worry about, you know, something crazy happening to you because of him. It's just, it's just that he's evil because of how much he's looking out for himself and what he's willing to exploit and manipulate to get his way. So I really like, I really like Asmodeus. I really like him a lot. Um, the characters in games that have worshipped Asmodeus I think are interesting. Um, so I love him. Next is Calistria. <sighs> Calistria is a chaotic neutral deity and she's crazy, okay? Um, she is a deity of lust and revenge. The lust part, totally on board with, okay? Nothing wrong with, you know, some, some, some casual sexual activity. Nothing wrong with a little, little promiscuity. You know, we love it. We love to see it. Totally sex positive here. Love it. Great. Um, the revenge stuff... I do not like at all. I hate revenge. Um, I know Gyrona kind of goes into that, but like that's a different situation. This is like, you know, revenge against oppressors in society, and Calistria is like revenge personally because someone just did something to you. Every character we've come across who like worships Calistria in Kingmaker, and um, I haven't really found one in Wrath, I don't think. But in Kingmaker, like every character who worships Calistria is just is just stupid or an asshole. Like Regongar, he's an asshole. Okay, Tartuccio, stupid and an asshole. Um, the girl that was trying to get Akundayo to go with him, um, she's totally an asshole. Like invaded his family's funeral to murder us all. Like, come on, man. Calistria has the worst followers. She's terrible. Um, she did help fight against Rovagug. I will hand her that. I will give her that point, okay? But other than that, I don't see anything good that she's necessarily contributing to society or anything. Like, it's just violence and mayhem, almost. And I am i don't really vibe with that at all. Um, so I'm gonna put her... Um, probably a Burn the Heretics. I'm not a big fan of her at all. I... Yeah, I can't, I can't deal with her. No thanks. Caden Kalian. Caden Kalian is an awesome god who became a god um, through ascending from the test of the Star Stone, um, which he did on a drunken bet and succeeded and thus became a god. And he, you know, is one of the gods of luck, um, of, you know, traveling and good times. Uh, He's almost like the Dionysus of this group, um, if you know anything about the Greek gods. And he's just, he's a good guy. Like, everything he does, you know, he's all about freedom. He's all about, you know, people being able to do they want as long as it's a good thing. 
Um, I will say it sucks that he hates, he pretty much hates all of the evil gods. Like even if they're helpful, like Asmodeus, like it doesn't matter. If you're evil, he's kind of against you, right? No matter what, which is kind of shitty, but um, I think out of the stories of, out of the three mortals that became gods um, out of this list, he I think is one of the coolest. Um, he's, he's just, he, there's nothing bad about him. Like he's the guy that's like at the party, you're just like, man, everyone loves that guy. Like that is, that is Caden Kalian, for sure, for sure. Um, definitely a top tier god for me. Probably one of the only chaotic gods that I actually like. I dislike most of the chaotic gods, um, but I actually think that I, I, I really like him a lot. And I think that Caden Kalian is another god that I would worship in this, um, in this world, if I lived in this world, I think Kate and Kaylee would be right up there with gods I'd be willing to worship. Uh, he's just, he's so cool. He's such a fun guy. He's just a good dude. Next is Desna, <laughs> Lady Luck, okay? Um, she is the goddess of luck and dreams and beasts. Um, well, she was trying to be the, the goddess of beasts, right? So what happened was her mentor, was the original goddess of beasts. I don't remember how to pronounce his name. I know it starts with a C-H-U, but I don't know how to pronounce it. Um, and that dude died. And um, Desna was his protege, and she was going to take over his domains and his legacy. And then Lamashtu came in and took over the domain of beasts um, before Desna could. And so Desna doesn't have that domain per se. Um, but there are like a lot of monsters and beasts that become good do end up worshiping Desna, which I think is really cool. Um, I also love the idea of dreams. She's also one of the original deities. Like she's one of the first deities who, when everyone was building um, Galorian, Galarian, she was busy building the heavens um, and creating the heavens. So she's she's very head in the clouds, dreamer type of deity. Um, most people that interact with her in Kingmaker and Wrath are very interesting characters. I'm a big fan of her. Um, so I think she's really cool. I think she's really cool. Um, I think she's she's very she's very interesting in in that she's one of the ancient ones and hasn't changed over time. Like um, in the lore, she is not only one of the oldest ones, but also one of the oldest ones to not have really changed much of her aspects in that time, um, which I think is super cool. So I like Desna a lot. I think Desna is dope. Um, but I'm only gonna put her at culturally observing because I don't think I would ever worship Desna, but I think Desna would be an interesting one to at least know a lot about as one of the ancient, more ancient deities um, for sure. All right, next is Aristil. Oh, and, and Caden and Desna are both chaotic good, in case I didn't say that. Aristil is a lawful good deity. Um, he is the god of the hunt and also of community. Um, he prefers people to like, instead of big civilization, he prefers the small towns um, and small villages within the wilderness, living in harmony with nature kind of situation. Um, so there is kind of an order to it all, but it's interacting with the nature in that way and not just completely destroying it. Um, so he butts heads with Abadar a lot, right? He heads, he, um, head, butt heads, <laughs> he butt heads with Abadar a lot because of that. So they don't really get along very much. Uh, he's a cool god. There was a lot of Aristotle stuff in Kingmaker that got kind of interesting, um, with the stag god. Um, he, you know, he can be very, like, he trusts his followers to have good intuition, good instincts, um, which is a cool thing. And if you fail to do that, he will take away your power kind of situation. Um, so Aristotle's cool. I feel like for me, he's kind of met, like he's just in between. He's in the in between for me, just because I feel like, uh, he's a cool deity. He has cool domains. But I feel like there, that lawful goodness does really show sometimes, and sometimes lawful good can get 
lawful stupid um, or lawful aggressive and I don't really vibe with that and he can be harsh he can be harsh and strict sometimes and I'm I prefer a deity that's kind of just either not concerned with immortals or is you know does whatever they can for them next is Gorum um, Gorum is an annoying deity, super annoying deity. All of his followers are annoying. Okay, all these freaking barbarians. You know, I've talked about this before. I hate barbarians. I hate them. I do not like them um, as a class or as characters in these games because they all are very, you know, they're very typical barbarians. They act exactly like you think a barbarian would act, and it's annoying a lot of the time. It's like, Ugh, blood for Gorum. Like, just shut up already. All right. Uh, so I, not a fan of Gorum. I don't dislike him actively, I just think it's annoying. His origin story is pretty cool. I think the myth goes that his, there was like, um, armor on a battlefield, and when the dust settled, um, the armor merged a deity of battle and war, and that's pretty much all Gorum is. Like, he's very one note. As a deity, like he participated in fighting Rovagug, probably probably because he got to fight. Um, like he's just he's very one note. He's very just. I want a battle. I want blood. Da, 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 right, and uh, all of his followers are exactly the same freaking way. I can't stand it. Um, so, <laughs> for me, and what's also he's depicted as like this dude in like black dark armor, and literally like barbarians don't wear armor like they go around shirtless very little pants on and but the deity is like an armored deity which makes no freaking sense like I, I don't get it so I'm gonna put him under here because he's just he's just annoying uh, Gazra I'm gonna be honest I don't know a ton about Gazra I know he's the the nature dude the nature deity um, he's true neutral and uh, and, and for being the nature deity, I will put him on philosophical debate because nature deserves, you know, talking and debate um, just like any other thing does. I just, I don't know much about him or his, uh, his origin story. I've looked stuff up and there's a lot of, like, differing tales that go along with him. Apparently he is one of the older ones as well, being the nature deity. Um, so... Yeah, I put it on philosophical debate. I feel like it's it's take it or leave it for me. I've made a Gazra character before. I think Gazra's fine, um, but you know, whatever. <sighs> Next is Iomade. Okay, Iomade. Admittedly, Iomade is one badass woman. All right, like she earned the hell out of her godhood, right? Like she's she's one of the star test the star stone test takers, okay, one of the three in here. But on top of that, like the amount of success and victory she had before that is just insane. Like she was just, you know, winning battle after battle, major events because of her. Like she was super impressive, which is why the ancient god um, Aradin at the time, you know, took her under his wing. And then when he died, he got she got. Her his legacy and his power and that's why she's Iomade the inheritor because she inherited it from him um, and rightly so to be honest rightly so to be honest um, she's not one of the lawful good go gods that like completely annoy me which is nice um, like there is a lot of justice kind of thing going on from her followers so her followers do kind of annoy me I think Iomade worshippers are some of the worst if you've played Wrath there's literally Sila, who's awesome, and then everyone else who worships Iomade is just a pain in the ass. <laughs> so it's super annoying. Um, but I think Iomade is pretty cool. Um, so I would put Iomade under culturally observing. Still behind Desna, but I, I do think she deserves to be up here at the top. She's she's pretty cool. She's a pretty cool deity. She earned the hell out of her, her godhood and uh, she continues to um, succeed and be a, a beacon of hope for people that live in Mendev in the world wound. So it's it's impressive, it's impressive. Uh, the next god is uh, Iori. 
he's the god of you know knowledge and self enlightenment and, and self discipline, and uh, he's you know believes that someone can become a god by becoming enlightened. He's kind of like the Buddha, right? So he believes that someone can become enlightened and achieve godhood that way. Buddha did. I'm not saying Buddha ever believed you could achieve godhood. I'm not saying that, but he did. And so he looks down on all of the Starstone test takers. He doesn't really believe that that's like, you know, touching a magical artifact and you get to be a god. No. Um, so he doesn't really vibe with those guys very much. Uh, Cade and Kalian, Norgaber, Iomide, etc. Um, but he's, he's a cool deity. He's uh, lawful neutral. Um, he, he, a lot of his followers are monks. Um, and they're all about, you know, the self-discipline and enlightenment stuff that he's in. His favorite weapon is, you know, the unarmed combat stuff. Um, he's an interesting deity. I feel like he's another one that I would I would philosophically debate, and I'd probably put him up here, actually, um, above these two. But I don't think I'd ever I'd worship him or anything like that. I think it would be a situation where I would talk about his philosophy extensively. Um, having studied philosophy myself, among other subjects, I yeah, I would totally talk about him all the time, but I don't think I'd ever worship him or make him a part of my life or culture in any way. So, next is Lamashtu, the mother of monsters, uh, the beast mother, the brood mother, chaotic evil goddess that stole the beast domain out from Desna um, and uh, is in constant battle with her. They, they are like rivals. They are rivals. Um, she, I think out of the chaotic, you know, evil deities that exist, she's kind of cool though, right? Like she's, she takes in the monsters, the malformed, the, you know, the grotesque people that no one in society ever wants to look at. She takes them under her wing and cares for them. I think that she does a lot of violent shit and, you know, fucks a lot of people up along the way but she she's still there for those people. So I think I think she's cool. I don't think, you know, the fact that you can't really worship her in society safely, I think is pretty shitty. I don't think there's anything wrong with her. In my Kingmaker campaign that I did, I took the priestess and let her and her followers be a prominent part of my kingdom. So I, I you know, I don't think there's anything wrong with her. I don't think there's any reason to shun a follower because not every follower commits these heinous violent acts. Only some of them do. There are actually plenty of Lamashtu worshippers in the lore that don't do anything to anyone and just look after the people that society has discarded. Um, so I think, you know, she's worth being around. Um, you know, and you know what? She's she's in my pantheon. All right, she's in, she's in my pantheon right there. So Nethys. Nethys is a, a really cool god. I really like Nethys. He, he's this duality um, god who like one side wants to save the world, the other one wants to destroy it um, kind of situation. He was just trying to learn all of the magic and power that he could and he went insane. And I think that's really fucking awesome. That's metal. Um, I love Nethys. I love Nethys when playing uh, the Mystic Theurge in the games. I think it's cool to have like one side be the violent side, like either divine or arcane magic, and then the other divine or arcane magic be like, you know, your side that wants to save the world. So you've got both sides constantly battling with each other, and you worship Nethys, and uh, uh, especially with Wrath, because Wrath has like the Priest of Balance archetype, which is like perfect for Nethys. So it, it's just, uh, it's awesome. I think he's, he's a cool deity, and I feel like if you're going to study magic in some fashion, that Nethys would be the deity that you would want, you know, to take part in, in, in worship and study and philosophize and all of that. So I think Nethys is pretty cool. Little insane, buddy. Little insane, but he's cool. I'll put him at the top here of philosoph uh, philosophical debate. Norgaber. Norgaber is a piece of shit, all right? Um, I like Norgaber in theory. Um, one aspect of him. I like one aspect of him, and that's the uh, the the gray aspect of him, where he's just a thief. He's kind of this, the true neutral thief side of him. I think is great. You know, it's 
a lot of bounty hunters, paid assassins, people like that are into that side of him. And I think that aspect of that one aspect of him is pretty nice. But the rest of him is shitty. He gets along with none of the gods because they all don't trust him. Even the other evil gods do not trust him because he's, you know, the king of just backstabbing and sabotage. And like Serenade, for example, Serenade kept, kept trying to like save him over and over and Nordgrim would go to her and, and you know, try to get her to help him out. And then he would betray her and do something awful every single time. And it was, it's that they don't get along at all because of that. Um, all the lawful gods pretty much hate him. Like everyone hates this guy. Everyone hates this guy. Um, he did pass the the test, the Starstone, um, and became a, uh, a god that way, which is interesting. No one knows who he was before. There's a lot of speculation, but his followers try to keep it hidden from everyone um, and keep it a secret um, if they even know it. Some people debate on whether they even know the truth. If maybe only he knows. Um, so it's interesting. No one knows who he was, and he just he became a god and is now a god of you know murder and stealing and shit like that. Neutral evil deity, just a piece of shit. Just will betray you. And I don't vibe with betrayal at all. So for me, he's at the bottom of the fucking barrel. Alright. Um Phrasma, man. Phrasma is one of those annoying ass deities, okay? Because everyone who worships Phrasma, first of all, hates undead. And I love the undead. I think the undead are great. I think they're a great resource. I think if someone volunteers to be undead, there's nothing evil about it. Undead are great. Phrasma hates it. And she's also just like, anytime you want to do anything with anyone that dies that isn't just them dying and being done with it, anytime you want to know stuff about people's deaths like anything like that she just is just like no like this is my domain i'm in control people are gonna die then they're gonna go to wherever i send them and that's the end of the story okay you don't get to do any of this shit um and it's just like girl come on right so um yeah i can't i can't um iomade doesn't get along with um Phrasma, I think it's Iomade that doesn't get along with her because uh, Phrasma keeps um, the death of Aradin a secret, um, which is another shitty thing that Phrasma does. Every character I've run into that's a priest of As uh, Phrasma in this either game has been annoying uh, to no end. They're just the most like self-righteous pieces of shit, even though they're a true neutral deity. Like. I hate it. I hate them. Um, so yeah, I, I find them pretty annoying. Not nearly as annoying as Gorum. Not nearly as annoying as Gorum, but still annoying. <sighs> Rovagug. You gotta put Rovagug on the bottom, okay? He wants to destroy the world. That's not something that I would vibe with if I lived in the world. He wants to destroy the world. Not cool with that. Everyone kicked his ass and took him down. <laughs> Um, so that's, that's what I'm here for, right? That's what I'm here for. And so, all, yeah, that's, all I can say is that he's an evil piece of shit. He wanted to destroy the world. I don't vibe with that. Put him at the bottom where he fucking belongs. Anyone who worships Rovigug is also a murderous, genocidal piece of shit. Screw you, all right? You're fucking Rovigug like an ass. Okay. Saren Ray. Serenry. Okay. I I really hate Saren Ray. Um, not as much as the others. I really hate Saren Ray. And here's why. Saren Ray is so annoying. She's so terrible. She's like, I will grant you mercy. Fucks up again. I will still grant you mercy. Fucks up again. I will still grant you mercy until she finds out that you just aren't gonna be repented at all. And she's like, oh, no mercy, then die. Like, you went from zero to fucking 100. This this duality of hers, this, these twin aspects that she has are just fucking terrible. Like, yeah, she was like instrumental in fighting Rovagug. Like, she was like, she really led the charge on that one. So 
kudos to you, but you're just terrible. Like the whole mercy or die shit is so annoying. I hate people like that in real life. Um, I hate it. I hate it so much. Mercy or you're gone. Mercy or you're kicked out. Mercy or you die. Like it's, oh my God. There's an in-between. There's an in-between and she refuses to acknowledge it. So I can't stand her. Um, she also is the cause of like her city, you know, the city of uh, Gormas being completely destroyed, okay? So the city of Gormas was getting a Rovagug following because Rovagug was able to spread his influence and whatnot. And she sent a herald to go deal with it. And then the, the, the priests and the people killed the herald instead. And she was like, okay, that's it. And destroyed the entire city. And that's why you have the pit of Gormas. And that is just, like, you destroyed a whole city because they killed a guy! Like, what kind of goddess are you? Oh, uh, I can't stand her. I can't stand her at all. No. No. Shaylin! Shaylin is, like, my top culturally observing. Uh, I think being a goddess of beauty and art is just so awesome. And I, like, I appreciate artists so much. I'm not an artist myself by any means. Anyone, like, if you've seen any of my channel art, my little animations at the beginning of the video, any of that shit, like, it's not me. I have my friends that really help with me on that, um, and do all of the work for me. And it's they're great at it i appreciate artists and talented people like that so much and i think having a church where they get to shine and show off what they do for such a good cause is just so cool like if your art could like channel divine magic and like actually magically inspire someone with divine inspiration that's so fucking awesome so i love shellen i love shellen a lot um She's great. Uh, Social in Wrath of the Righteous is an awesome worshiper of Shellen. Um, I do think the people you run into in Kingmaker that worship Shellen give Shellen a bad name because I think she's a lot better than that. Um, but I, I think she's a great goddess. I think she's a fantastic goddess. You need her in your pantheon. You just do. <sighs> Next is Torag. All right, Torag is the dwarven god. Dwarven god of um, like defensive like fortification also has some to do with battling but mostly like crafting and like machinery and 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 um, like artisan type stuff um, so for me Torak's pretty high up here definitely above Iomade um, Torag's great. Torag's cool. I think a lot of the people that have worshipped Torag, he's kind of like the firm but fair kind of dad god. Um, and uh, he's he's really cool. He's a really cool deity. Um, the dwarves love him. There are lots of people on the surface that also love him. He's, you know, all about fortifications and that and, that, and defensive strategy, which I, I love fortification and defensive strategy stuff. So like in a war aspect, I think Torag's super valuable for um dealing with with battle and strategy in that sense so i i think torak's cool uh, you know he's like he's the father of creation kind of thing like he it's it's such a cool such a cool deity and like every dwarf you meet who can channel some of torak's power just can do incredible things and like being able to make stuff like that i mean it kind of goes with shellen right it kind of goes with shellen for me where they're they're both makers and I think that as maker deities, you kind of have to at least culturally observe them, if not worship them outright, because what they contribute to society is so above and beyond what other deities contribute. And I think that you have to take that into consideration. Ergothoa! Ergothoa is at the top of my philosophical list. Um, because I, I, I vibe with the undead. I think that Ergothoa can sometimes go too far and she forces her powers on people that don't want it a lot of the time in the lore, but um, she's cool. I like, you know, she, she's against Phrasma. They, they butt heads a lot, obviously. Like Phrasma's number one enemy is Ergothoa. But I don't think there's anything inherently wrong with Ergothoa or undead in general or what she's trying to do. Um, so I think that 
you know, her undead powers and granting people eternal life in that way, especially those that want it. I think if that's what they want, that's what they want. Like, you can't blame someone for granting someone a power that they want and doesn't affect anyone else. Like, granting someone eternal on life does not affect anybody else. It just affects you. So, like, what's the point of being upset about that? What's the point of being upset about undead? Like, if you're racing the, if you're defiling bodies that are put to rest, that's one thing. But if you're, if you got people that volunteer or you're on a battlefield and you're just immediately raising dead soldiers to continue fighting, like, I feel like those are solid reasons to have undead and say that undead is viable. So, I vibe with it. I vibe with it. Zonkuthon. I'm sticking Zon Kuthon at the end of the philosophical debate category because I gotta give him credit. When he was Dubrawl, um, Shellen's half half brother, he did amazing things. Like he was instrumental in um, hurting Rovagug and putting Rovagug away when he was trying to destroy the world um, and the universe. And uh, he, you know, he just had a little bit of jealousy of his of his sister's talent and decided to go to these dark corners of the world and ended up getting possessed by this alien entity um, and thus became Zon Kuthon in that way. He's the dark prince, you know, the lord of murder and torture and things like that. Um, and so nothing he stands for now, I think is good by any means. Um, I do like his like lawful evilness, um, but I, nothing he stands for now is good but i gotta give him credit for what he was before dubral was an amazing person could have been an amazing god if given the chance and uh it's a it's a damn shame that he didn't get to live that out i do want to give honorable mention to two gods one of which is grotus okay grotus is a god um introduced in kingmaker i mean he's in the lore but in kingmaker we got to see him for the first time really He's kind of like the god of all the end times, just waiting for everything to become dust, and then he's gonna do stuff. Um, I think Grotus is a cool, I love the end time gods. I love the end time gods. So I think Grotus is a really cool deity. I'd probably put him in the middle of philosophical debate somewhere, and I think that he's just a really fascinating deity. Um, and then the other, the other shout out here is for the God Claw Pantheon. As you can see, uh, Asmodeus, Abadar, uh, Asmodeus, Asmodeus, however you say it, Abadar, um, Torag, Iomade, and Arori. These are um, these are the these are the pantheon. Okay, the five gods make up the pantheon of the God Claw, which is worshipped by the Hell Knights, um, which is just fucking cool. The Hell Knights are badass. The God Claw pantheon is badass. Um, so I just want to give it wanted to give a quick shout out to that. Um, obviously, what they worship are all different aspects of these gods. Um, so defense from Torag, offense from Iomade, self discipline from Irori, um, strategy from Asmodeus, Asmodeus, fortification, and uh, you know civilization and conquest from from Abadar. So. So anyway, I think the God Claw Pantheon's dope. I'm worshiping them, wor worshiping them on my off-screen playthrough. Um, so I think they're cool. I think they're very cool. Um, anyway, this is my my rankings of the gods. Some people might agree, some people might not. Um, let me know your opinions in the comments. I would love to see what gods you favor, what gods you're totally into, um, and what gods you hate or disgust you. Let me know. If you disagree with me, definitely let me know. I think it's cool to have a little debate about it. Um, but yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed this fun little video, um, not little, it's a little bit long, but fun video. I enjoy doing these rankings, we've got a few more rankings, um, down the road at certain points. Um, if you like this video, like and subscribe, uh, if you want to see further content, I've got guide videos that I'm releasing too, if you want to stick around for those. If you want to ever watch me stream, I stream on Tuesday, Thursday, and I stream on Saturday and Sundays. So feel free to come check me out. And I got a Discord. So if you ever want to talk game, you ever want tips or advice or to talk to a bunch of other people who also love this game and Pathfinder World in general, totally hit on the Discord. And uh, there's, a, there's like 20 of us or so in there and we're all having a good time. So we'd love to have you. Anyway, 
I'm Unslung NPC, and I will definitely catch you guys in the next time. In the next one.